Seek showdown continues to play out this afternoon in Washington and they get ready for the next meeting that they're going to go into. There is new fallout today, though, over these comments that President Obama made about Americans and what they think about all of this in this debate. Take a listen to this. Let me distinguish between professional politicians and uh, the, the public at large. Uh, you know, the public is not paying close attention to the ins and outs of how uh, a treasury auction goes. Uh, they shouldn't. They're worrying about their family, they're worrying about their jobs, they're, they're worrying about uh, their neighborhood. Uh, they've got a lot of other things on their plate. We're paid to worry about it. All right, now we should mention that that answer was in response to a question by Chip Reed. And the question basically was, Mr. President, when you look at the polls, it appears that there are lots of folks out there, I believe the number was around 47%, saying do not raise the debt ceiling. And that was the answer to that question, which is important uh, in the context here. Joined now by Leslie Marshall, syndicated radio talk show host and Fox News contributor, and also Jason Lewis, a syndicated radio host. Uh, welcome to both of you. Uh, what do you what do you sense, Leslie, uh, in that back and forth about how the president feels about how engaged Americans are and how much they do get what's going on here? Well, I actually agree with them 100 percent on this. Uh, first of all, I think more Americans were watching the Casey Anthony trial than were watching any arguments on any network uh, about the debt ceiling. When the majority of Americans what is that? Wait a minute, Leslie. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What, what is that? What are you suggesting there? What are you suggesting? What, what, what I'm suggesting is that we care more th about things that are, uh, you know, attractive or sexy news-wise, like the Casey Anthony trial, hmm. than we do about hardcore numbers. I mean, the debt ceiling and raising it, let's admit, is not sexy talk necessarily. We can try and make it as sexy as possible today, but it's not necessarily sexy talk. <laughs> when we look statistically at the Americans who say, look, should we raise the debt ceiling and borrow more, that doesn't sound good to anybody, regardless of their ideology. But if Americans really studied what happens if we don't raise it, I believe those numbers would change greatly. You know, it's so interesting I believe the president was accurate. It, uh, I, I think in all of my years of covering the markets and the economy and you know, politics and, and what's going on out there, I've never seen people more engaged in any debate than I think they are in this. And I think that there's a certain amount of, um, and I understand the president was saying, you know, this is our job and this is what we're paid to do and what we're elected to do. And I respect that part of it. But there's an underlying current there, uh, Jason. And, and I want to see if, if, if you think that's the case that basically says, you know, you folks just don't, you don't get it and you have to leave it to those of us who do. If the president and his party are paid to watch the debt, they need a salary cut. I mean, look at where we're headed. Does, does Greece ring a bell? Italy now, Portugal, Spain, Ireland, for crying out loud. The president knows that the American people don't want to raise the debt ceiling because you can't spend your way out of a debt crisis. So he's kind of pushing this thing down the road saying, well, they're not really engaged. You just, just leave it to us. The real chance, uh, Leslie and Martha, of default is if we continue to raise the debt ceiling. If you add on more of this, we're already approaching vast numbers of servicing the debt. If we get to 18 or 19 percent of the federal budget on interest costs, we will get a downgrade from S&P and Moody's. Well, so they... the American people intuitively understand that the, the worst thing we can do is raise the debt ceiling. The president is operating on this false assumption that, well, everybody realizes we have to raise the debt ceiling. So we need a compromise. I need a tax increase from the Republicans, and, and I'll have a cut here. No, well, that, it, that is not an assumption. It's that is not I mean, an we basically heard well, the same thing from John Boehner yesterday, you know, that there was agreement around the table that they have to raise the debt ceiling. And I do do think it's interesting mm -hmm. that so many people are saying that they don't think that that's necessarily how this has to go, that there are other alternatives to solve this problem. Uh, I want to play this from Jay Carney, uh, which is from uh, one of the news briefings that goes to this issue of how engaged people are. And let's listen to this. We'll get your thoughts on this as well. Most people do not sit around their kitchen table and analyze GDP and unemployment numbers. They talk about how they feel their own economic situation is. They do not um, uh, sit around analyzing the Wall Street Journal or other or Bloomberg to uh, look at the, you know, analyze the numbers. 
Well, you know, that there's this, that, that's part of the same argument, Leslie, that, you know, that it's so complicated, it's so arcane, uh, and that most people, you know, don't want to spend their time thinking about it. But, but people do understand basic things. They understand the job market, and they understand paying their own bills and being able to, they understand that if they run out of money, they're going to have to give up stuff. They might have to sell their car. Mm -hmm. They might have to sell their home. And I think people relate to that, that completely uh, basic analogy in their own lives, and they say, you know what, something's going wrong up there in Washington. Well, I don't disagree with you there. That's why I think the polls show that. However, if they say, okay, well, what happens once we hit that deadline in August? What happens when we have to cut Homeland Security and we can't really claim to be as safe? What happens when, like the president said, he can't guarantee Social Security checks? What happens when thousands of public employees are laid off and unemployment numbers go up? And the bottom line is, you know, for all their politicking on both sides of the aisle, Republicans are going to come to an agreement and going to have to for Democrats right. so because me, at the end of the day, I they need the so vote. Sure let, let, me ask, let me ask Jason this, though, because, you know, the president has said today, he just said it moments ago, that the Social Security checks might not go out. Uh, if that happens, Jason, and, and Republicans, you know, we spoke to Alan West earlier, if they hold the line on this and they, they say we're not going to vote for any increase, uh, is that going to come back to bite them uh, come election time? Well, it depends who wins the, the debating game, I guess. This is the Washington Monument strategy. Uh, interest costs are about $19 billion a month. Even if we don't borrow any more money, the government will take in $177 billion a month. They'll still have about $158 billion to prioritize. That would cover Social Security, Medicare, and military salaries. Would other government functions have to stop? Yes. So if the president chooses not to send out Social Security, the Republicans need to make it clear that that was of his doing that the money is there. Tim Geithner said, we're not gonna prioritize, that's unfair to the American people. Well, then it's not about default, then it's about keeping the spending spigot open. That's really what they wanna do. All right, uh, thank you very much, Leslie Marshall, Jason Lewis. Good to have you both here. Uh, thanks, guys, we'll talk to you thank soon. Thank you, Martha. All right, come